Hi everybody, this is Chuck from Press Check Training and Consulting. Uh, this is my second attempt to make this video. I had some audio issues the first time that I recorded it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, uh, quickly, the omnivore holster and issues with mounting the omnivore holster to other types of belt adapters, drop legs, whatever, as well as questions that have come up about the compatibility of uh, the omnivore with uh, with various types of Surefire lights, specifically the Surefire 300V Vampire. So, quick background: uh, got this omnivore given to me uh, by a student in class, a student that was shooting a CZ pistol, and uh, I asked him, well, "Where'd you get a duty rig for the CZ that holds a light and has red dot on it?" Uh, and has retention and he told me yeah this is this is omnivore and he gave me the whole spiel and i was like oh man this this holster looks like it could really be uh uh you know have a place in my stable for all of my my various niche guns uh that that don't fit standard safari land als uh holsters and then he broke the news to me that it was made by black hawk and i was like oh, dude are you kidding me uh because People in my circles, uh, and my circles are generally derp free. Uh, the Sherpa is a non non-starter. Uh, the the Blackhawk Sherpa uh, is is a dangerous holster, and it is mechanically flawed. So that's why I have never even looked at any other holster that Blackhawk has made. But uh, there were some design features about this holster that I liked, and uh, the the biggest one being. The biggest one being that it takes, it indexes off of the light and therefore is kind of pistol agnostic. So I could take this CZ Shadow 2 uh, Bull Shadow with that's been cut for RMR plate and it goes right in there and it locks and it has active retention. So gun is stiff. I mean, it is solid in there like it was made for it. You know, I know the chances of Safari Land making a CZ-75 with light and cut out for a red dot. It's probably not high on their list because there's not a lot of these pistols floating around out there. Uh, you know, I could take that same uh, I could take that same setup Put it on a 1911 frame pistol, 2011. So, and of course, I don't know why I would need to, but it obviously will fit a Glock. So for an instructor that flies to get to his students and who uh, teaches a lot of closed enrollment for law enforcement and military, the concept of having a single uh, duty style holster with active retention, level two retention, uh, that will work on 1911 frame pistols, CZs, Glocks, uh, it allows me to bring one holster on the plane and then have either a couple of different guns or, you know, uh, I can reconfigure and bring several guns of the same type without having to do a, hol a holster swap. That being said, the it needed to be dropped and offset to be able to interface and work with body armor. The Omnivore came with this belt attachment. And it was a very big, it was a very high, high ride. If I were a plain clothes, like detective style dude or whatever, uh, and I had a require an, uh, department requirement that I had to have, you know, a level two holster for, for doing that. And I think that's the market where a lot of people are hanging out with the, the Sherpa dudes are carrying the Sherpa holster because it's a lower profile holster than the Safari land ALS rigs. But 
it's just horribly executed. So the omnivore is uh, could potentially fill that niche for for a guy. You know, high ride belt holster, plain clothes. It's it's kind of open carry. It's not fully concealed, uh, but it's got a little bit of attention there for uh, protecting you from the gun uh, the gun grab. My uh, so now I wanted to use this for duty use. So I started looking at uh, the holes. Oh, it's got three holes. They're not Safari Land three holes. They're, the holes are offset and different. So I immediately didn't want to get into the Dremel tool lane. There's an article of, on this holster on Recoil Magazine, hat tip to Recoil. Uh, quality of their content is, is the articles are getting better. They're more informative. Uh, uh, you know, it was a good, decent article. They mentioned that you could take uh, the QLS uh, fork that allows you to lock into, uh, you know, that modular system. And that with a little bit of dremeling, you can interface that onto this three hole pattern. That would be good because my all time favorite belt hanger is the Safari land UBL mid ride. So uh, this thing, especially with the, the QMS QLS, whatever uh, adapter, the giant fast tax buckle looking thing, uh, is going to kick this gun out plenty far enough that I'm going to be able to get it, even if I'm in full kit, uh, doing a demonstration for a class or something like that. So uh, I didn't know about the, Q, uh, the QLS modification, so I started looking at, at Blackhawk's holster accessories. And I went on the Blackhawk page, and they indeed did have duty belt belt hangers and they had a regular one and then they had one that was cut for jacket tuck for officers that work in cold environments and so i i took a chance and i ordered the uh jacket tuck one thinking that it was going to be uh you know it was going to have a nice dropped offset which is what i'm i'm looking for to get that gun down and away from my body uh, or my belt line to be able to draw easily around side plates on my plate carrier and any, anything that I have in that area, which I try to keep clear. So I order it and it comes with extended screws. I had seen some comments on the internet when I did my internet research that the um, accessory screws were too short. So I looked at them and these were indeed extended and I thought everything was good to go. What I didn't know is that Safari Land's duty rigs uh, for the Serpa and all of that use a 10 30 second screw. Uh, the, I mean, I knew that because it said it on their website. I did not know, and nowhere did it state that I could find that the Omnivore uses an eight, uh, eight something. We think probably 30 second. Uh, so it's not just the difference in length, but the diameter. This screw is just fatter. And I did not see that when it came. When I got my accessory, I said, oh, look, extended screws, good to go. I used, an, uh, I used an electric driver, not like a DeWalt with a screwdriver head. So I used an electric driver that didn't have a lot of crazy speed or torque on it. And I started trying to drill, uh, drill that screw through and, and into the holster body. And what I ended up doing was boring the plastic out and... Uh, uh, trash in the top of the of the brass uh, thread thread receptacle inside of the holster. So I used Blackhawk screws with a Blackhawk accessory. Tried to put them on a Blackhawk holster, and I destroyed my omnivore. It's it's dead. So now I know that uh, if I want to put the duty accessories from uh, Blackhawk onto this Blackhawk omnivore. I'm crossing duty gear over into their other kind of gear, and the screws are not the same. So I'm going to order another omnivore holster, and then I will go down to uh, Home Depot and I will check out thread pitch and find find out sort this thing down. To, is it eight thirty seconds or is it eight thirty six? Or whatever, and then I'll extend the length half inch is, I believe, the appropriate length. I uh, I looked uh, yesterday 
at the Home Depot and five eighths was too long. So I want to get a full, I want every one of those little threads to make contact on the inside of that, that receiving end of that omnivore so that if somebody starts torquing and driving and pulling on my holster, uh, I'm not holding on to just the top two or three brass threads and having them strip out. Since I could see how easy it is for these things to strip out, I destroyed them yesterday. So that's where we are with the omnivore. But there's a big Facebook discussion going on over on primary and secondary. No, it was on tactics and applications. Sorry. It was on tactics and applications. There's a big old uh, discussion about it, uh, about this holster in general. And uh, the question came up, is the holster Surefire X300 Vampire compatible? And the question, is, uh, the answer to that question is, it depends. If you have one of the original vampires, like I do, the one that's only a hundred and something lumen, uh, it came as an A model, meaning it does not have a cross thread screw. All right. The additional length of the light head is irrelevant. There is enough room in the design of the omnivore that it can accept that additional length down in here and still get to the lockup. This holster locks up on the back of the Surefire X300. When you push this button, it actually rotates a tab that is clicked in and holding the back of your flashlight. It rotates it out of the way, allowing your gun to be replaced, uh, removed. Um, so that's good, except for most people that have vampires have moved on the latest uh, version of the Vampire is 350 lumen, I think, and it utilizes the Surefire. It uses, uh, utilizes the Surefire B mounting system, which is what they used initially for the X400, and now you can get regular uh, U-boats in A or B model. Uh, and then the Vampire, apparently its default is also uh, the B model for the current one. That does not work because the screw interfaces on this side, uh, excuse me, interferes on this side with proper fitment uh, of the holster body around the 300 as it slides in. So if you have a Surefire 300V that has a B screw, you're, you're done. You can't, can't, uh, can't play. If you have any of your U-boats that have B screws, you're done. You can't play. But if you have anything with an A model, like the old 300 V or the U-boat 300 U, these will click on gun to gun. No issue. No problems. Uh, and work in this holster. Uh, am I advocating the omnivore holster? No, I'm not. I'm trying to test the omnivore holster, but I can't test it and give you guys a review and tell you if I like it and tell you what, what feedback uh, I have on it if I can't hang it off of my body. So step one was just simply being able to get the gun to interface with my gun belt, and I can't get past that step yet. So once I get past that step and I have the proper tools, I will uh, do another video where I talk about, you know, exactly the, you know, 830 second by half inch is what I think is what I think I'm going to need to go buy from Home Depot to make this modification happen. So as soon as my omnivore comes uh, from Amazon Prime, uh, I pay a little bit more because it'll be here in like a day. Uh, as soon as as soon as this thing comes from Amazon Prime, I've already got the belt hanger. Home Depot's right down the street. Uh, I'm going to uh, hand check my screws this time without the uh, belt hanger attached, and just make sure that the threads are lining up. And if the threads are lining up, then I'm going to go ahead and add the belt hanger and uh, go ahead and put some torque on it. So that's all I got. That's the end of uh, that's the end of this video. Going a little bit long. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and uh, that there's better audio. I'm gonna do uh, today is Surefire Day for uh, for press check on this beautiful, lovely Saturday. I'm going to 
do another video immediately following this where I talk about uh, all the different Surefire pistol lights, uh, what I've got going on, what I'm carrying them in, how I'm configuring them, you know, all, all of that stuff. So uh, that is for my paid uh, patron subscribers. Trying to give those guys a little bit extra content and love. Uh, share this video around. If you liked it, if you thought it was informative, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's been dead as of late because I've been putting most of my content on my Patreon page. But I'm going to uh, make an effort to put more videos out uh, for public consumption. It doesn't hurt for you to subscribe to notifications. My videos are few and far between. I drop one on YouTube, and boom, you're going to get notified that Press Check has put another video up, and you'll be able to uh, adjust accordingly. So thank you for uh, your time, and you guys enjoy your Saturday. Take care.